Ridley um, has, I've known him for a long time, since mm -hmm. we were in advertising together. And for many years, he has wanted to shoot a film in Provence because he has a house here mm -hmm. and he's got a great eye and he loves the look of the countryside. And he said it would be wonderful to shoot here. And um, I would also be interested in doing a story about wine, because he's, he's got a little vineyard as well. Yeah. And he said, all right, well, you do the book and I'll do the film. So I thought, oh, that's terrific. But in a way, I didn't believe it, because the history of books coming to the screen in Hollywood is not all that easy. And the average time is about 15 years. So I didn't, really? I didn't hold my breath. But I wrote the book anyway, and much to my surprise, about a year later, Ridley called up and he said, we're going to start shooting on August the 29th, I think it was, mm -hmm. and Russell Crowe is in the lead, which I hadn't anticipated at all. And so I was startled, uh, astonished and delighted by that. There's always an apprehension as a writer, no, sure. because you think, what is that awful person who's going to do the script going to do to my lovely book? <laughs> You never know on these things, no, do I'm you? No, I'm sure. And were you never attempted to get involved with actually writing the screenplay, or were you? Oh, no, you no. You just left it entirely oh, to God, no, no. Ridley said, would you, would you like to have a go at the screenplay? I said, absolutely not. How different is the book to the actual film? Would Quite different. Say? I mean, there's a lot more in the book, because uh, for reasons of compression, they had to cut out uh, you know, quite a large part of the, the criminal element in the book. Mm which was the swindle in Bordeaux between Le Lubron and the Bordeaux. Right. Um, but it's basically about the criminal aspects of trading in wine. Ah, oh, so there is a lot more wine actually in the book. Yeah, oh. yeah, there is. It was a wonderful hook on which to hang a sort of a scam, you know? What I love about wine is that nobody actually knows. You can't be sure. Mm. Somebody says this is terrific, somebody else says it's absolute crap. Um, who knows? You're, you're, one, is, one is dependent on Robert Parker or whatever his name is, uh, or part of most of America seems to be. They will only buy Points. wines that have 95 or above mm. out of 100. And so when anything, anything is vague like that, and the, the perception of quality is never quite guaranteed, then there's room for crooked behavior, which is always something attractive to a writer because it's more interesting than people behaving decently and honestly, that's all. But they don't go into that very much in the film, no. but, but it's in the book. So. It's very much in the book, mm -hmm. yes, because they all go up to Bordeaux and there's a bit of a scramble about yeah. selling it and everything, which is actually one of the uh, more delightful passages in the book, I think. <laughs> Do you, you've never had any ambition to make your own wine? Absolutely or? not. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I know, my, I know my limitations. I'm not a do-it-yourself man, I'm not a plumber and I'm not a vigneron. And uh, I adore the wine, and I'm very respectful of the people who make it, but uh, I know my limitations, and I wouldn't... Uh, we don't even have any vines around here. Right. As you can see, we have olive trees, which Actually. are less uh, troublesome and easier to understand mm -hmm. for somebody simple like me. So, no, I have no ambitions in that regard. I just, I just like to have friends who make good wine. That's easy. Absolutely. Yeah. I think I've been very lucky in my life, because I do what I like. I live where I like and I get paid for it and you can't expect more than that out of life really Absolutely. other than perfect eyesight <laughs> I still regret but there's nothing much I can do about that